it's really knowing that you have the authority to do so and knowing when it's the father's heart for you to do so mm-hmm. otherwise it can become a party trick and you just sort of right. oh i'm gonna go and do this do this 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 now i make myself available it's up to god if he wants to use me <coughs> you know that's that's the key of how it works and yes. i'm available all the time in the spirit and i generally at night when i go to sleep i sort of make a conscious intention that i'm available if you want to use me i was thinking about you know justin's been talking a lot about governing over space and time and i just wondered like with you i'm assuming you're doing this too and so i'm just wondering how you uh go about you know doing that and how you personally co-create time miracles and engage in all of that okay um well in terms of time miracles and that type of thing it, it's on a need to do basis so yeah. if i need to do something and i feel it's in alignment with the father's heart then then i basically choose that reality so i choose uh-huh. the reality that aligns to the father's heart which also is is um something out of that which i know how to do in the sense i know how because i've done it before so i have testimony uh-huh. some of those testimonies were things that happened to me some of those testimonies there were things that i chose to do uh, and then i choose to do it again um mm-hmm. and to be honest it, it's not it's not as common as it once was because i don't think i've got the the need to do it as much in a, in a sense mm-hmm. um and i'm sort of managing um working and cooperating with time um in it's not working against me it's always for me so i don't operate from a mindset of well i'm too busy i don't have enough time i right. always consider that i have enough time and if if that is the choice and intention that i have then i always have enough time now, whether that is a uh, an outworking of a time miracle in that there's an expansion or contraction of time uh, to enable me to do whatever I need to be doing, I don't consider it any other way. So sometimes it's relative to the way you're considering it. So I don't know how long it would take me to do something because I don't look at it from the point, oh, well, I've got an hour or there's two hours or I've got this. I just outwork what I need to do and I do it. Now, that might entail time expanding, contracting around what I'm doing. So it's not that I do something from a position of, oh, I don't have enough time. I must do this. I must do that. It's always coming from a, a state of rest and being. So I operate from a state of rest. Therefore, I am able to do everything I need to do. It's not even a concept in my mind that I don't have any enough time to do something. I will always have enough time to do something. And if that entails time bending around that, then it will around my choice and my choosing that reality if you're coming from a perspective of well i don't have enough time and i've got a limit to this time i've only got an hour i've only got this then you may have to consciously choose to expand or contract time because your mindset is i don't have enough whereas i always have enough therefore it manifests around me more than me saying okay i'm going to expand this time right now from an hour to a day i don't need to because i always have enough time therefore time will respond and cooperate with me in that way now if you're looking at time miracles in that you can go back in time and do something then i only do that as i i'm led to do it it's not something i can i can choose to do it but i'm always surrendered to the father's purpose in it so if i did an activation 
um, which I, I mean, I think I did an activation with a group last month in which it was, OK, let's be open to being available for God to use us back in time. So we go into the now of the eternal now and then we can come out of that into any place in time. And it was as if we'd always been in that time. You know, I didn't change history. I was used in history, but I go into the eternal now in 2024 and I go back to I don't know, 1925 or 1850 or whatever it might be. I do something. I've always done it, but I'm only aware that I've done it now because I've gone into it relatively to my now position. And I come out from the eternal now position into that time, come back into this time having done something. I probably am less aware of doing that than I would have been in the past. Um, let me the, ask you, let me just ask you here. Are, are you like rewriting history? Do you no. know what I mean? No, okay. you're not. You're, you've always okay. been used in history. I see. Okay. Because if you think of the eternal now as it's all now, I can go into the eternal now in 2024 I'm part of that continuum I and see. I can then go into, let's say, 1850, do something, come back into the eternal now and come back into 2024. And I've always been used in that moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't go back and change that moment from the eternal now perspective. That moment hadn't happened yet until I went into it. It's a different concept from linearity. You can't think linearly um, to be able to effectively do that. Now, when I first did it, I was just taken into it and I found myself in the past and I did something in the past. Then I found myself back in the present. I didn't know the mechanics. I just was in a position of engaging with God. I found myself somewhere else. I then went, came back and it was obviously in the past because the people were dressed uh, and spoke in a, in a way from, you know, a couple hundred years mm -hmm. ago, whatever it might be. I also found myself in space, in other places in this time and mm -hmm. other places in the, in the world. And um, now I don't think I traveled spirit, soul, body. Because I think in occasions I did something, I asked people, well, was I still there? Did I disappear? And they said, no, but I, it looked like you weren't there consciously. So then my spirit soul was transported in, in another space, let's say in China, Russia, anywhere. Um, uh, and... I did something, but I manifested physically in that space. People were able to see me, engage with me, and I was able to touch them. So my spiritual being was able to manifest into a physical reality, which is exactly what an angel does. Right. Angel is a spiritual being, but can manifest in this physical realm in a physical way and can be touched and can touch us. So that that has happened, um, you know, and I was quite often aware of that happening, but I am always available for that sort of thing to happen, whether I'm conscious of it or not, because I don't have to be conscious to do something because my spirit is conscious. I can mm -hmm. do something in my spirit being without necessarily my soul being aware. Yeah because I dwell in that spiritual realm all the time. It's now, interesting. You, you just mentioned something like you had been there, like physically. Just recently I was at my church and I guess it was about a month ago, a month and a half ago, they had this conference and there was a speaker there and it turned out they left. It was on a Saturday. They left to go back home. I saw the people, the person, one of these people on stage on Sunday. It was so wild because mm. I looked at the person and I went about doing my business. You know, I was praying for somebody 
And then it dawned on me, wait a minute, that person left yesterday. Mm. And then I was like, okay, was the person there in spirit or was the person there in bodily form and spirit? You know what I mean? I never got a chance to go up, walk up to her and touch her, mm. you know, to test it out. But it was just, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happens. Um, you can choose to do things uh, when you feel you need to do them. Maybe you need to get somewhere and you don't have the physical time to get there. You could expand the time you do have to enable you to get there. Or you could contract the time it takes for you to get there. And I've done both of those things in the past. Um, where, you know, I needed to get to a train station at a certain time. I was running a long time late and I chose to get there and was able to get there on time, even though there wasn't actually enough time. Now, you could say I could have expanded the time I did have or I could have contracted the time it took. Either way works. I don't think it matters. I've done the same flying in that we took off in an airplane over an hour late. The air, the flight was about an hour and 40 minutes and we got there to catch a connection, um, which wasn't naturally possible, but I needed to catch the connection. So I chose the reality that we would get there. Now, again, I'm not sure whether the time it took to get there contracted. So we got there in a shorter period of time or the time we had to get there just you know expanded in that sense so it doesn't really matter it's really knowing that you have the authority to do so and knowing when it's the father's heart for you to do so mm -hmm. otherwise it can become a party trick and you just sort of right. oh i'm gonna go and do this do this 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 now i make myself available it's up to god if he wants to use me <coughs> You know, that's that's the key of how it works. And yes. I'm available all the time in the spirit. And I generally at night when I go to sleep, I sort of make a conscious intention that I'm available if you want to use me. You know, and there have been occasions where people have said, well, we talked last night in in, a, in the heavenly realms or whatever and whatever. And I'm like, oh, great. OK, what do we talk about? Um, because I'm asleep, you know, but I'm still active. You know, my spirit doesn't need to sleep, you know, so I'm active and my soul doesn't actually need to sleep. But I usually am at rest mm -hmm. during the mm -hmm. night. My body does need to sleep. So I usually go to a place of rest and therefore become not conscious. Otherwise, you'd be awake all night in the sense of consciously awake. And that could be emotionally draining. Um, so I'm not conscious but my spirit is is in gay is awake my soul is resting and my body is asleep and i'm able therefore to be available to do whatever it is that the father might have me to do um, and that could be to answer someone's prayer in the past it could be to answer someone's prayer in the present it could be to do anything in the realms of heaven it could be to engage legislatively and lots of different things now some people may have specific uh, tasks or quests that it, that enables them to go back into the past sees what saw what happened and then with that knowledge then do something in the present to deal with what happened in the past that that's another way of doing something so you become aware of what actually happened in a particular moment in the past and that then gives you the ability to deal with what happened in the present to make sure in the present that the past no longer affects the present in that way you don't change what happened but you become aware of it and that enables you to have the wisdom to deal with it that's another way of operating within uh -huh. within time um and i know people who have done that in which they needed insight into something that happened a covenant that was made and they observe the covenant being made. And then when they came back into the present, they were able to undo the covenant that was made and deal with it. 
So that's another way of dealing uh, with with time uh, in that you observe, but you don't interfere. Right. Um, but what I don't believe you do is you go back and you change time. Because if you did it, no one would know you did it, would they? Because the it would have we would only be aware of what actually happened after you did it. Right. So from our perspective, it would be as it was. Now, I know quite a lot of people have this, I can't remember what it's called. There's this sort of phenomenon where they believe that there's sort of multiple streams or there's things that yeah. happen. I out. heard it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't know about that, having not had any experience of that. They seem to think that they have knowledge of something that happened but no one else does and that could be a fact of that they observed something or possibly changed something but we wouldn't know would we because we would have just always had that timeline so if a timeline was changed only the person who changed it would know it was changed because it's right. changed and therefore we live from that changed timeline now i'm not I'm not sure of that one way or another. It might be possible. I've never done it that I'm aware of, but I have gone back into time, done something, and I've always been used to affect that. So history hadn't changed. It's always been that way. I'm just aware that I was involved in history from the now perspective. I mean, I guess not to cause a, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it, but to, to disturb people over it. I've never been in the past and someone's taking my photo or anything like that, where I was then seen in the past. Because mm -hmm. um, that could obviously create for some people a lot of issues around, around <laughs> what, you know, you're, you're someone from the present and you are seen in the past. God doesn't want to draw attention to these sorts of things because i think that would then maybe create an, a curiosity or an interest which might not be healthy mm -hmm. and then people might tr be trying to do something um which is out of their own desire to do something mm -hmm. rather than being available to outwork god's desire for something that makes sense yes no. yeah um so yeah there are that type of thing you know, and there have been occasions where I have trans relocated from one place to another um, mm -hmm. instantly without without really feeling anything, but being in one place and then being in another place instantly. It wasn't that I particularly even chose to do it um, when it first happened, but then there was an occasion where I needed to choose to do it. Mm -hmm. I was running late for a train and i was 10 miles away and i needed to be there in two minutes so then i was there and it was a weird it was like i was just there there was no sensation of travel there was no sensation of anything other than i'm here you know and i was here with somebody else that needed to catch the train so it's an interesting um phenomena now some people talk about trans relocation from going through portals and feeling the physical travel through a portal that's never really happened to me in that way mm -hmm. um i have gone through portals but that's mostly in the spirit mm -hmm. and i've traveled spiritually through portals rather than physically mm -hmm. uh, whether i have gone through a portal and just come out the other side and been unaware of it i don't know I mean, you know, I guess that would be quantum tunneling in that you would go into the, the spiritual realm or the quantum realm and come out somewhere else. And it would be pretty much instantaneous because there's no distance in quantum entanglement. Um, so, you know, that would be an instant effect um, pretty much. Um, now, that's scientifically possible because that's what electrons do when they appear on the other side of a lead screen which is impossible for them to travel through so they couldn't have traveled through it so they must have gone somewhere and come out on the other side of it instantly pretty much 
you know. So I think there's lots of different variations of time, space, travel, ministry, things. What I don't believe is, is that there is a fixed future that already exists. Mm -hmm. Because if that was the case, then none of us would have choice because it's that's, happened yeah, the way true. it's going to happen. I believe people who think they've seen the future are seeing what God intends for the future. Or God is showing them a version of the future that they can be involved in creating. But I don't believe it already exists. Otherwise, we would just be robots following a fixed fatalistic way of looking at life and i don't i believe that god has desires for the future and there are multiple timelines that could exist to bring the, about those desires that we choose to get involved with or not mm -hmm. um, and if we choose to get involved with them then we can be cooperating with god in creating that future by choosing that realities or whatever choices we make to align with god's desire for the future can bring it about but we're involved in it and we're actively involved in it and i think we can we have choice in it and we have get the choice of how we are at working that desire it isn't a set of instructions that we have to follow it's a desire and intention that we cooperate with to bring about and we cooperate with it in our own way uh, now i know other people have different views of the time they they're adamant that they have gone into the future and seen it i'm not convinced that that's the truth i believe what they've seen is what the father is showing. they could have had a vision of the future that god showed them to inspire them to be participating in that I don't believe the future exists yet. Now, it's difficult when you think of the eternal now because you you can think of, well, it must be all now, so the future must already exist. It's just all now. And there's that's one way of looking at it. But I think God has placed a limitation on the now to be in the moment, for that moment to be chosen, and then that becomes the past. So each moment creates the past, but the future doesn't exist until, well, we choose the moment and then, mm -hmm. then it's the past. So it, it's like it's there. We're on the verge of every moment that then becomes history. Right. But we've chosen in that moment something which then becomes history. It's not that the future existed and I then chose the future. I choose the moment which actually is an outworking of god's desire that will become its history because if you think about the future we don't see the future we only see the present and the past and every microsecond that passes is now history mm -hmm. we lived it in the moment we never lived it in the future we might have thought about what the future choice could be but as soon as we choose that timeline, then it collapses into the reality and is past immediately. So you know, something else that kind of interesting, yeah. and as you've been talking about all of this, is I kind of think, okay, all these prophetic words, <laughs> right? All these prophecies that if you say, okay, some of them were not at the start mm. true prophetic words, but among those that are. There's always things that happen, it seems to me, yeah. that surprise everybody, right? Yeah. So it's like, well, the surprise is, you know, the unfolding and the walking out somehow mm -hmm. of the words, you know, yeah. in, in, the, in the manner that you just described. You yeah. Know? yeah. I personally, prophetic words, what are they? Well, if it's a word that comes from God that talks about something that might happen if you are in agreement with what happens and then it happens you've cooperated in it or you were looking for it that might be because the realms of heaven are in a sense different from our time frame and actually you could give a prophetic word if it's like a gift of the spirit prophecy, 
it comes from the spirit who's who who knows the heart of the father and that declaring something that might take place can take place because we agree together with god for its taking place because there's power in agreement so god sometimes a prophetic word is for us to agree with it so it can come into come to pass sometimes i mean and uh, most of what i would have heard as prophetic words from most of the so-called prophets of today i don't think any of them come to pass or very few come to pass and some of the things are so general that you could read into anything to see them mm -hmm. come to pass i mean i saw very a true. i saw a video a youtube video the other day which viewed five or six so-called prophets who prophesied in 2022 what was going to happen in 2023 so they played the clip of the guy who said this this and this then they looked at 2023 to say was there any evidence that that took place some of the words are so general that you're going to hit something if you scatter gun approach on anything <laughs> but majority of them you would say no there's no they did not take place the way they were said they were going to take place at all and therefore the guy was not prophesying he might have been declaring what he wanted to happen or he might have been declaring what he thought god wanted to happen but basically it didn't happen now generally when people make those prophetic declarations they are general and not very specific so it's hard to pin them down now you know some some like words are oh, 2024 is going to be a, a word where things will accelerate well what does that mean and for someone who heard that something might seem to accelerate because now you've thought about it you can see it in a different light and therefore it might feel like it's going to take place more quickly but would it have taken place any more quickly if you'd heard it or not heard it probably not so it's all relative from your perception of things and i think a lot of people who are prophesying stuff i don't believe they're prophetic words at all and i don't believe there's any evidence that they got fulfilled and you get some very specific prophetic words which definitely don't come about i mean like some of your american prophetic words about elections yes i agreed <laughs> you know, have not come about at all not you know all. there's going to be this happen that happened it didn't happen <laughs> but those people who said it was going to happen very rarely do they ever come back and say i'm oh, sorry i got it wrong agreed because they don't want to ruin their reputation but people know they get it wrong so so in, in one sense they probably get a better reputation if they came out and said oh yeah i must have misheard or i didn't hear it right you know but generally a lot of what people say i mean let's say you know if you had a very specific thing well there's a going to be an earthquake take place you know in six hours time in this country and it happens then that's a pretty accurate yeah. word that actually you could say there is a genuine fulfillment if i sort of said oh there's going to be an earthquake that happens yeah there's an earthquake that happen every year you know mm -hmm. so yes someone could say yeah that was fulfilled but was it really a fulfillment of a prophetic word or were they just sort of choosing something that they know is always going to happen and therefore it does now i think there have been some very clear words that someone did say that did come to pass mm -hmm. why were they said and because they were said by the person did that bring it about or was it that it was a sign that god was going to use for a particular reason that god chose maybe to validate something or maybe to affirm something that someone then would trust what god mm -hmm. was saying because that was the case you know and sometimes saying something is going to happen is the reason it happens mm -hmm. i mean i that can was remember like, i remember oh, okay. You know, you know yeah. he no. was a clear example of that when he had his entree with yeah. Wimber. 
mm. back in the mid 80s. Yeah. You know, there were a few of these stellar. Yeah, um, there were a few Bob Jones and a few others. Yeah. Now, you know, Bob Jones also said things that you could say have come true, but what were the meaning of what he said? I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl a few years ago, there's going to be a revival. Mm -hmm. That was a prophetic word. The Kansas City Chiefs did win the Super Bowl many, many years after he predicted they would. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood of them winning it was, well, maybe one day they will, you know. Um, so that was not beyond the possibility that they could. Mm -hmm. But when they did, did revival happen? What is revival? What do the words mean? And I was actually, because I heard heard this prophetic word a lot from a lot of people in the US, I was curious enough to go and ask Bob Jones what it meant and what he meant and what has happened. Did it happen according to how he thought it was going to happen? Mm -hmm. Now, you could look and say, well, there are a few things that have happened since the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, was that just for Kansas? Was that for the whole of the US? Was that for a particular town? Was that for a particular person? Who knows? But I would say since that came about, which was what, 2019 or something around there? 20 or before, oh. maybe? You know, I know they won it last year and they've won it since, but they hadn't won it for a number of years up until that point. When it happened, would you say there's been revival in the US? Mm -mm. Probably not on a broad stage. Now, there have been some meetings. So there's the college yeah. meetings that happened that people say, ah, oh, the revival. Yes. Well, that was that was the several years after the initial thing of winning the Super Bowl. So actually, could you say that was the fulfillment of that? I don't think you could genuinely say that. Now, when I talked to Bob Jones about it as part of the cloud of witnesses, he, he had a very interesting conversation. And one of the things he said is, look, I use words to convey something that God was trying to get over. And I use the words that I knew to try and convey that. Would I use mm. the same words now? No. Because as soon as you word, use the word revival, that has a very specific meaning for some people and a very general meaning for others. Uh -huh. They used to have revival meetings. Well, what were they? Well, they were meetings hoping for revival. It didn't mean just because there was a revival meeting, there was a revival. And what is a revival? A revival from one sense would depend on what stream of theology you come from. Because reviving something means something's dead and it's going to be brought back to be to life. Now, that's not the general Christian meaning for revivals. So you might say that Toronto was a revival type thing, or you might say that the Cane Ridge revival, where some certain supernatural manifestations happened in the sort of Wild West era. I mean, there are lots of things that are called revivals people have written books about them which other people would say well that was a renewal or that was a reformation you know there are all sorts of words that are used to describe certain things bob jones sort of indicated that he would have not used that word because people had an expectation of something was going to happen which was not actually what god was conveying and the scope of it was not clear within the word so it was not people could read into it all sorts of things so bob jones what he did say to me was why are people still looking to words i spoke years ago when they can be engaging god for themselves to get his word for them now which is you know, an interesting perspective because a lot of those people who prophesied like that did not teach people to prophesy like that or to hear god for themselves they genuinely created a a need for more prophetic meetings and more of their prophecies i went to some mm -hmm. of the 
Wimber meetings with Paul Kane, Bob Jones, mm -hmm. John Paul Jackson and, and others. You know, and it always seemed to be the same sort of people who got picked out to have a prophetic word over them or a weird word, like a word of knowledge, which was so cryptic. It was like, what on earth is that talking about? And some of those guys, like Paul Kane, they, they spoke in cryptic language often when it came to those type of meetings. And it was sort of, I went there and I wasn't impressed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really impressed because it it just no if if one of them picked out me and told me something about my life which no one else knew then I would have been impressed but it always seemed to be the same sort of leaders who got picked out with some word now I know there are words of knowledge which are very accurate and the holy mm -hmm. spirit does give people words and confirmation to somebody by telling someone of something that no one knows and i know that has happened and does happen <laughs> and there are some people who function seemingly in that word of knowledge stuff quite accurately generally to get people's attention i think um because they need to be to have some sort of measure of faith in something that god is going to say to them and that mm -hmm. does give them that because no one well, no one could have known that it must be god and I think that sometimes that is the reason, you know, to, to do it. Um, but I, I think when Bob Jones spoke to me, it was very much, you know, people should not be list, trying to listen to words. I spoke 10, 20 years ago when God is still speaking today and wants to speak through them. Mm -hmm. But he did convey that he would not have used the words that he used and he prophesied through his own understanding of what he thought God was trying to say. God did not dictate the words to him to say that was what he was trying to get over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people, you know, thus saith the Lord, and then they start speaking. And it's really odd that quite often they speak in King James language. Mm -hmm. And it's like, does God honestly speak that way? Well, not to me. <laughs> he doesn't speak in old English to me or in <laughs> these and thous and everything else. And it is really funny when people sort of use that tone and they change their voice into a King James voice sometimes as if God's they're now using God's voice rather than their own. And it is a little bit funny sometimes. <laughs> and you do get yeah. people who then get messed up in what they're saying. You know, I've heard I've heard people quote that Moses built the ark when they were prophesying mm. something. Well, obviously Moses didn't build the ark, but, you know, but they said it. Now, does that nullify every bit that they were talking about? No, not really, because you have to discern. There's a discernment that's needed mm. to weigh up what's being said to see is what's being said aligned to the father's heart and does it resonate with you inside and then you can sort of pass over the fact that we prophesy in part and we prophesy in sense through our own language and through our own being and therefore it might not be 100 percent totally accurate and it isn't a dictation of god speaking god didn't take over our voice and force us to say certain things he might have encouraged us to speak out but that's very different you know um and so you know it it mm. is interesting um when you look at prophecy where does it come from well if it's coming from the holy spirit then does that mean that the holy spirit has seen the future and can say this is going to happen well possibly but you only need to know a very small point ahead of the future to say something before it's happened you know it doesn't mean that the future is fixed you mm -hmm. could have observed something and then said something to someone who's not yet seen that yet so there's different ways of looking at time space miracles prophecy and everything else my view is in all the time that i've been prophesied over which has probably been i don't know loads of times in my life I only really resonate with about three of those 
things as actually being God totally speaking to me in a way that absolutely affirmed that I knew it was God. The rest of it were mostly nice things, encouraging things, which weren't bad. You know, God loves you. And, you know, this, I mean, it's not bad. It's true. But is it a prophetic word that's coming from God that's going to change your whole life? You know, I think looking back, I had a prophetic word back in 1992 that prepared me for something that was coming, that I was going to move and plant a church somewhere. And I do believe that definitely was God. And I resonated mm -hmm. with it and it encouraged me that I could step out and do that when when the opportunity came around because i remembered the word god spoke to me specifically about a number of things that were going to take place when i moved and and what i should do in the move that was quite interesting and that came as a as an out of the blue thing i was painting my house at the time and i was up a ladder and all of a sudden there was this download of stuff that i didn't have any idea so I wrote it down and you know, shared it with a couple of other leaders. And they sort of says, well, sounds like God, but we don't think it's for us and we don't think it's for here. So it must be for you. So you go away and see what God wants you to do with it, which is what I did. And I did use that word to give me some guidance over the next 10, 15 years. And it did, actually, because God sort of gave me this. You need to be careful of this person and i'm like i don't even know who that person is but actually in the end that person uh, you know the couple actually um the warning was correct you know and there were a number of things like that you know um, and you know god spoke to me you know in 2017 and told me i had three years to get ready for a shift coming so sometimes god does speak to you to prepare you but he didn't tell me what the shift was in very specific terms mm -hmm. he just prepared me that i was then looking for okay do whatever you need to do to get me ready for whatever's going to come you know that was my attitude to it it wasn't sort of you know absolutely totally clear mm -hmm. because i think sometimes if it is absolutely totally clear then we try and make it happen Mm -hmm. rather than being inspired that god is wanting to do something and i'm going to be open to follow that into the mm -hmm. future you know so there's a there's <coughs> a lot around prophecy people who call themselves prophets that i think are very highly dubious right. yeah some, some of this stuff does that. run a run amok to be sure yeah. absolutely I had one more question I wanted to ask you, and this has a, has again like to do um, with this idea, which Justin is really immersing people in right now. So I'm trying to wrap my head around a lot of stuff, you know, essentially governing over space and time. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard for me to articulate this exactly. So bear with me, but yeah. I know Justin believes that we should not. And I don't know how else to express this, Mike, but that we shouldn't really come under the restriction that is set by the calendar, you know, the framework of time. You know, yeah. for example, he talks about the illustration of the so many prophets who have given prophecies regarding, for example, the new year. Typically, yeah. I never listen to those at all. Yeah. Um and he, you know, he highlights that as one of several examples. And he goes on to say, because, you know, that puts us under the earthly framework of the calendar, you mm. know, essentially, yeah. you know, uh, the earthly framework of time. And so he points out, you know, that's mm. one of the reasons I think, I think he would say that many prophetic utterances in the church have failed but anyway instead i think you know this he believes that we should basically govern over time through ascension where yeah. we're co-seated with christ in heavenly places and yeah. um that we should go up higher you know where we can begin to govern over time and see creative miracles as god wills and as we learn how to do them 
So yeah. as I was kind of pondering this, it's like a new message from him. Uh, I've been also looking at Chris Carter's, you know, Christopher Carter's Discover the Heavens yeah. for a little while. And I've, I'm so sad he passed away. But anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. um, what I, I'm getting a sense of this, that mm -hmm. I'm really not 100% sure that Christopher Carter and Justin are quite exactly on the same page. I know they both do Ascension, obviously, but yeah. that they don't exactly hold exactly the same views. And I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure where to go with this, except that <laughs> I know that uh, Christopher's taught um, yeah. extensively on the cosmic clock. Yeah. You know, so I'm wondering if you have some insight in this as I kind of yeah. look I mean, through these materials. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, I know both Chris, Chris and I did, you know, spent some time. And we actually, with Justin, spent time together on Ascensions, you know, uh -huh. in 2020. We spend quite a bit of time ascending together and doing things together and everything else. And some of it's semantics in the it's just the way you express something. Um, and I know the sort of cosmic clock thing. I never bought into that I am going to be controlled by some either astrological setup of the stars or that I'm going to wait for 2,500 years or whatever for the next period of Aquarius to come or Aries to Aquarius or Pisces to Aquarius, all those, yeah. you know, it's almost like, well, okay, I do believe in immortality, but do I really want to wait for two and a half thousand years for another season to come? I believe that those seasons were illustrative of God's desire to do something. Hence, okay, let's look at the Aquarius and the water pourer. And people will prophesy all sorts of stuff about whether well, there's this living water coming, there's streams of water going to flow, we're going to have revival waters flowing, you know, all depending on what where they're tuned into, they will use that form of Aquarius to say all sorts of stuff. And then the transition between the ages and all that stuff. Yeah, there is often transition between what God is doing. Do I believe in times and seasons that God operates? Yes. Do I believe God operates within our times and seasons to help us relate to things? Yes. Because sometimes he says to me in three years time. So he's respecting the fact that we live in time. Now, ultimately, am I subject to that in that legislating and governing the times and seasons that God wants to do something is for me agreeing with God and participating in the co-heirship to bring about what God desires? Now, that doesn't mean I can govern somebody else. I can't control someone or control what some people do. Now, I think sometimes when you think you know what God's heart is and you try and make what God's heart is by controlling other people or legislating against other people, I don't think that's how God wants us to do it. I believe everything that we legislate should be for blessing, never for cursing. So never for removing somebody or anyway someone ends up dying or send someone ends up losing their job and yeah i legislated for that i don't think that's how god really wants us to do it personally i'm not saying that you could do it because you may have the power and the authority to do certain things as a son but is it necessarily what god wanted us to do i'm not convinced i don't resonate always with the sort of i'm so concerned with what's going on in the world i need to change it because the way that then seems to get transpired is that I'm going to come against this and I'm going to come against that and I'm going to go come against the other. I don't think God comes against anything. God wants to bless to bring about change and transformation. I'm not sure that's the negative. And I think there's still a bit of spiritual warfare in a few people that operates. That they're looking at it as a warfare type. I'm coming against the enemy. But they seem to do it in the same spirit, not the opposite spirit. So I'm going to operate in love in what I'm doing. Now, for me, 
I can govern in love and that will bring about change to bless people's lives, to bring them into an alignment with who God says they are and what God wants for their lives. And I can call that into being. I can decree and declare that I can govern and legislate that. But I'm not controlling those people. They still have a choice to embrace God's heart for them. And if they don't want to embrace God's heart for them, I can't control them into. And I can't control a government into changing a policy just because I don't think the policy is what God wants. Because I think a lot of some of people's ideas are coming out of their own sense of what's right and wrong and justice rather than gods or sometimes mm -hmm. you know so i'm i'm totally in agreement that we have as sons the ability to cycle the seasons or cycle things in time to bring about change and transformation and that might appear to be a, an acceleration but i'm not going to be controlled by the cosmic clock i think we are therefore to govern times and seasons to bring about god's purposes but not mine or someone else's or in a negative way in any sense. Therefore, if I'm governing time, what am I trying to do? Control time, control what happens in time. Now, if time is also a being that we yeah. can cooperate with and therefore I believe process and journey is what things are about and people are on different cycles of journey and process for some people it takes a lot longer than others therefore if you're going to try and control the time then you're going to make it too fast for someone and too slow for somebody else so they're there to legislate for their own outworking of their journey within the time that they're in so i think it's complex and I'm not convinced that people know what governing space and time really means when it's said. And I don't think that it's ever really explained to a degree that most people would get it. So, yeah, I'm just like a, like a little, I, I, you know, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. I understand kind of what you're saying, but I'm also like, I don't know that, I'm sort of thinking about what Chris Carter seems to me like what he's doing. I mean, he interfaces, you know, with these different beings. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure at all that he would be legislating in the way that you've mentioned. Do you know what I'm no, kind of saying? No, yeah. I don't think he was. But he others was might. Relational and right. was sort of in, impressing that there are things that God wants to do that do sort of have a thing. But I don't. I don't personally think that I'm governed by the circle of the deep or the Mazarov yeah. moving around the heavens. And I've got to wait for 2000 years for a change to take place. Right. I embrace that change. Now I can bring that about in my life now or in a quick right. period of time. Therefore I would legislate for the revolving of the circle of the deep with the chancellor's houses that Chris didn't have any understanding of. As far uh -huh. as I'm aware, I talked to him about it and he didn't really seem to know what I was talking about. So I'm talking about the wheel within the wheel within the wheel. So we, if we're only governed by the external wheel, what's moving the external wheel? And if it's relative, then it isn't relative to time as we know it, that it's fixed for 2000 years. Because the inner wheel of the 12 chancellor's houses has a way of facilitating things to change externally because things are changing internally or within the inner wheel. It's complex and uh, it people see it from different perspectives. Are they right or wrong? Probably both right and wrong in different ways that they see mm -hmm. something. And they're just describing what they see from the perspective that they see it. It's like, you know, in a dark room with an elephant, some person says, oh, this elephant's like a hose pipe. Someone <laughs> says this elephant is like a tree trunk. Some people will say different things. This elephant is like a rope. Well, they're touching the tail or the trunk or the leg. You know, it's still the same elephant, but they're all seeing it from a different perspective. So they think that their perspective is the only perspective because they're focusing on it. And I understand that. And of course you do when you are, you know, that's your revelation and you bring it. 
But I think that revelation has to fit in with many other people's revelation to bring about a probably a more whole view of it. Mm. As I would see it, you know. So I, I, you know, have been involved in the circle of the deep and all that stuff for quite a long time, and I have perspectives of seeing it the way I see it, and I resonate with how other people may have their perspective. So I know this was connected some way, but I don't see it the way they see it. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't make them wrong, but it also doesn't make them 100% right either, as I'm guaranteed not to be 100% right. You know, because there are different perspectives that need to come together to give a whole mm -hmm. perspective, which is only God who sees the full big picture mm -hmm. of it. You know, but what I don't want to do is is I don't want to use my position of authority to try and control what ha happens to other people. Right. I want to bless them. I want to give them opportunities of, of embracing their destiny and their but I can't control what they do or how they do it by legislating for them to do it. Now I can decree and declare and call forth the desire of God for their lives and call them into blessing and all that sort of stuff. And hope that they will respond positively to God's purposes in their lives and follow their own journey and pathway to for their fulfillment. But I can't make someone do something or not do something mm -hmm. by me being seated above them in heaven. Because I think that's control. God doesn't do that with me mm -hmm. or you or anybody else. He doesn't force us. No. Total he freedom. <laughs> us. Yeah. You know, he's wooing us and encouraging us and nurturing <laughs> us to follow and walk the journey out, but he's not forcing us to do it. Therefore, I don't want to see governing as controlling people. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.